Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is Randa and today we're starting another week of Randa's Crafty Vlog. This week's fucking weird though. You know, like, it it's 4th of July was on Monday. I, I my whole entire week has been screwed up because of it. <laughs> so, uh, it's Wednesday that we're starting this. I never start on a Wednesday. Sometimes I miss a Monday and I start on a Tuesday or whatever, but never have I missed a Monday and a Tuesday and we so we start on a Wednesday. Never, never, never. So, I definitely feel out of sorts um, and I don't love it, but it'll be okay. It is Wednesday, July 6th. It is 1042 in the morning. I, my whole schedule has just been so out of whack. So I haven't talked to you guys since Friday last weekend or last week. So, geez. <laughs> so we had a really good weekend. We had a good 4th of July weekend. Um, we had a plan to do like a lot more stuff because it was a three day weekend, but we just didn't um, because things kept coming up. Like Perry was working on a, a bike for one of his, was working on one of his coworkers motorcycles. And like he spent like a good portion of the weekend fixing it. And then his friend came to pick it up on Sunday and, uh, and then left and got like one exit away from our house and it broke down again. And so then Perry was like going back and forth with tools, like trying to get him going again. He did get him going again and he took it, took the bike home. He should be fine. But it was still just like, okay, hold on. Like we were going to go on like a bike ride um, on Perry's motorcycle. And he was like, never mind. I got to go problem solve. Like, so, okay, we're going to problem solve. Um, but it was still a good weekend. On Monday, we went to a new lake. We went to a lake called Carter Lake, and that was really fun. It was a really nice lake. Um, Perry had his jet ski, and we took ash, and we hung out at the beach, and, um, had a good time, ate one good time. So, um, nothing crazy. We did have a few fireworks that we lit off, and it was really cool because their ash is so scared of fireworks. It's so funny because I don't remember her as a puppy like being that scared of fireworks but maybe that's because at least in our neighborhood there's so many that like it's it's a lot and so they and so maybe it just feels like a lot more to her than what she's like used to than what she was used to at the apartment where there just weren't that many um but she's definitely scared of them so I felt bad because she was really she was really kind of on edge all weekend that she wasn't like awful but she definitely wanted to like hide didn't want any part of it um and Ash is not one to hide so you know she was scared um but we lit off a couple fireworks ourselves and it was really cool because the fireworks show, our local fireworks show in, in Kingsburg is actually like fucking lit. Um, <laughs> it's actually bigger than the one in downtown Denver. Um, and it went on for like, I think it's bigger because it went on for like an hour. Uh, that it wasn't just like a 15 minute like show. It was like a whole thing. And so it was kind of funny because there was actually like a, the neighborhood, our, our street was having like a little block party. And unfortunately my stomach was hurting. So I don't, and I don't know why. So I didn't go, but Perry went and mingled a little bit with the neighbors and that was a good time. And then we sat in our backyard and we could literally see our local fireworks from our backyard. And so we sat in camp chairs in our backyard and watched the fireworks, which was really cool. So, um, we had a good weekend. Um, that's about it. <laughs> um, and then on Monday, so yeah, that's what we did on Monday was we went to the lake. Um, and that's part of why restock was a little bit late this week because we were at the lake at four o'clock when we restock was supposed to go live. And I had like little to no service. So it was really difficult to get restock going and I need to like plan that better in the future. But I was able to get it live. So it was a couple minutes late and I'm sorry, but um we have everything available at the moment. We've got scented wax, scented putty, and I have the pre-order open for our log books. So if you're wanting a log book, I got you. <laughs> um, and all that good stuff. So, and then on Tuesday, 
I was like so tired because on Friday I found out that I have a bladder infection and I'm it's just annoying at this point I'm just kind of predis predisposed I think is the word to them I'm just prone to them that I just get them more often than the regular person I've had hundreds of them in my lifetime and uh and so I've been on an on a low dose antibiotic for like a year to try to like give my body a moment to like reset. Um, Cause I went to the urologist and she was like, your bladder is just like so angry. I was like, I bet it is. <laughs> so, um, so she gave me like a low dose of antibiotic to be on for a year. But then when I switched over to Medicaid, I wasn't able to go back to see her because I needed a new referral for my new primary care. It was a pain in the butt. Um, and I still just haven't like gotten around to it. I need to do that. But, uh, but then I went six months not taking my medication and not getting a bladder infection. And so I was like, maybe I'm, cause she said, you know, it could just be the one year or you could be on it for the rest of your life. And we just don't know. Um, so I was like, maybe I just need it the one year, like she said, and I'm good. I went six months without a bladder infection that had never happened in my entire life. So I was like, Maybe I'm good now. And then I got a bladder infection. So it's like, no, I'm, there's a good chance I'll just be on that antibiotic for the rest of my life. And it's fine. So, <laughs> um, cause it's better to be on a low dose antibiotic than it is to like absolutely like fill my bladder with like scar tissue and stuff and like really create some problems. So, um, so I do need to just make the appointment and go and and do that but it's just annoying and I don't want to <laughs> but anyway I had a, I found out I had a bladder infection and so I was sort of recovering from that all weekend I feel a lot better now I've been on antibiotics um but uh but I was just I definitely felt like I was like trying to recover from that and uh and so in you know in addition to the, my whole recovery process was also on Tuesday I slept in until like 11. I was asleep until like 10.45. It was absolutely ridiculous um, that I should have, I never sleep that late anymore. And so I, I chalk it up to like, we had kind of a busy weekend and I was getting over a infection and that made me tired. I'm still like kind of tired today, but I mean, I'm okay. You know what I mean? Um, <laughs> so, on Tuesday, I woke up at like 10.45 and then like not long later at all, I needed to leave for therapy. And so I didn't have any time to work in the morning on Tuesday like I usually do and then went straight to therapy. And then after therapy, I needed to pick up my meds, my like antidepressant and stuff. And then I wanted to stop at the Dollar Tree because I wanted to get a couple frames. And by the time I got home, it was like 4.45. <laughs> I was like, well, the day's done. Like, I, Perry was home, like, ten minutes later. Like, I didn't have time to, like, sit and film. Um, so that's why we've gone two days without anything. So I'm going to try to make up for it a little bit, but this week's vlog might just be a little bit shorter than normal. But here's how I plan to make up for it, is that I have two Reddit stories for today that I have blind picked out. Um, and then we'll... And then I have a crafting wow. And then we'll continue on for the one a day like normal. There is some big stitching news for myself that I want to share you share with you. La la la. I finished my own cross stitch pattern. This is crafting is my coping mechanism. I released it like two weeks ago on my Etsy shop. And I immediately started stitching it once I released it. And this is it complete. This is stitched one over one on 25 count. So if you stitch it two over two, it will be bigger. Um, you'll need a bigger piece of fabric than this. I know that for sure. This is a nine by 13. You'll need something bigger than that. But this is stitched in all DMC one over one on um, 25 count antique white linen, Lugana, Lugana. <laughs> uh, and I think it looks so good. I think it came out really good. I was really worried about the size when I first started stitching it because it looked really small, um, but it's so cute. It's almost exactly five by seven. Um, so it's like 6.3 by exactly five. Um, so it actually, because it's exactly five height wise, it does not fit in a five by seven frame. So that was my, 
That was my search at the Dollar Tree yesterday was to find a good frame for this to fit in. And I think I found a really great solution is I found this seven by seven frame. I was like, oh, what a unique frame size. That's perfect. Cause then it's, so I'll have, you know, like a couple inches at the top and the bottom, but then I'll have a little bit of room on the sides as well. It's better than having to get like an eight by 10 and like, you have so much extra space, you know what I mean? Cause that's kind of what I thought I was gonna have to do. Um, but no, I found this really nice little five, seven by seven at the Dollar Tree. So it was a dollar 25, I believe. Um, and I, and it's glass. Like, I think it's gonna be fantastic. I wanna show you some of the other frames I got too. Um, hold on. They're in here, hold please. <laughs> I also got, oh. They have a lot of really great frames at the Dollar Tree. So if you want to frame your cross stitch pieces, they don't have like giant ones that you could put diamond paintings in. But um, if you cross stitch, they do have really great frames. Um, so I got this little one. It's white and gold and it's a four by six. So for a good like miniature one. And then I grabbed this one, which is a five by seven and it's pink and gold. And then I grabbed this one that's just pure gold and it's an eight by 10. So it's like, I just grabbed a couple um, to just sort of have in my like frame stash so that hopefully I don't have to like go to Dollar Tree every single time I finish something that maybe I just have like a little stash of frames. Cause I have, I think I have like one eight by 10 white frame and then I have a like eight and a half by 11 black frame. So I have a couple, but I wanted to add more. So all of these I got from the Dollar Tree. They have a lot of black ones. They have a lot of like wood looking ones. They have a, they have a big selection at, you know, at Dollar Tree. So if you need some frames, that's where I suggest because otherwise you go to Hobby Lobby and you spend like a ton of money. I do not, these are all glass. Like it's not even like, like that's glass. So it may not, might not sound like it, but I promise it's glass. So, <laughs> so it's like, why spend a fortune on frames when you can get them for a dollar? So just saying, um, so I'm going to put those back and, um, so, hold on. So I'm going to be filming a framing video probably today, maybe tomorrow, depends on how the day goes of me framing this. And then I think maybe next week no maybe not next week i don't know at some point i want to film a video of me like putting all of my framed pieces on my wall over here um so we'll see that'll happen at some point but next week the video is actually going to be about my at least i think it's going to be about my new wax because i'm releasing a new wax formula next week Woo! so it'll be a good time um That's what else I was gonna tell you. I had to think for a second. So when I finished this, I finished this on like Saturday or something. So when I finished this, I picked up Map of Hawkrun Hollow again. So we're going strong. This is where we're at. So if you remember from the last time, you can kind of see it over here, from the last time we were at page three. So the way that the pattern is set up is top half one, two, three, bottom half one, two, three. It's a six page pattern. So at the top half, I had finished page one, two, and then had like the tiniest little bit left of three. So since I picked this up again, I have finished three and I've moved back down to the other, to the far corner where page one is and started page four. So I am halfway done with this pattern. I'm really mad. I wanted to take a picture when I was moving the cue snap of my halfway done point um, and I forgot. So I unfortunately do not have a picture to show you, but uh, we are halfway done and now I'm starting on page four. So this is where I got this weekend. There's a lot of, there's, this is a very like heavy stitching page. So it's going to take me a while because it's almost completely like fully stitched, um, which is just ridiculous. So I'm starting on part of like the eagle wing comes all the way down because this is an eagle up here. The eagle wing comes all the way down and then it moves on to like other stuff over here. It's going to be a good time. So that's what I've been stitching on. Um, 
that was kind of all I wanted to show you. Oh yeah, I did get this really fun, I love buying things from Etsy. I got this really fun coaster, this little macrame coaster. And this is from a really a really little Etsy shop called um, Threads by Owie. Uh, threads by A-W-I. They only have like 18 sales. I was like, why? Your stuff is so cute. So um, I got this from her. It is a little bent from the packaging that I need to like, I don't know, iron it or something because it just got bent during the shipping process. But also I just put it on my desk just like this because I think it looks good. So it's a little coaster that I am keeping on my desk and they have a bunch of different colors and they also have a bunch of different other macrame stuff, like really, really cool. Um, 10 out of 10 recommend. So I got that. Uh, you can check them out on Etsy. They have a ton of fun stuff. So that's that. But I wanted to show you guys that. I got this cool macrame coaster for my desk. So it sits right there and then my drink sits on it. I thought it was fun. <laughs> um, let me take a drink really fast and then we will do the Reddit story. Get two seconds. Hold on. Hold please. <laughs> Um, yeah, cool. Let's do Reddit stories. Um, so I have two of them. So we're going to do one Reddit story and then I'm going to show you the crafting wow for the day. And then we're going to do the second Reddit story. And that's how we're going to kind of, um, wrap up. So this is an am I the asshole? They're both an am I the asshole? Uh, this is really both of them are quite new so this one's 20 hours um and they've already given the decision that this person is the asshole um but it has like a, a really good amount of awards and like 17,000 upvotes and 9,000 comments so like and they've already locked the comments like this 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 went real fast so this is called am i the asshole for calling out my sister for breastfeeding at my wedding my 34 male sister gave birth to gave birth two months ago. She brought the baby to mine and my wife's 23 female wedding. She breastfeeds wherever, whenever, wherever she goes. We visit her house, she'll breastfeed in front of us. Visiting our parents, she'll breastfeed. Going out in a public setting, she'll sit on a bench on the park and breastfeed. Go out to a restaurant, she breastfeeds everywhere. I've never spoken on it because I know she'll get mad and offended, but when she did that at my wedding, I lost my cool. During the reception dinner, she just did it again. I kindly approached her and asked her why she didn't bring formula or at least bump milk out, maybe that's supposed to be pump milk out, and put it in a bottle so she wouldn't have to do all this at that moment. She said, because I don't have to, I feel comfortable breastfeeding. Getting milk out on my own is more painful. I said she could just make this sacrifice and compromise for one day instead of doing this in front of 250 guests on my wedding. She then said she can't do much about it because a baby has to have her milk because the baby has to have her milk. I told her she should be more thoughtful of, of that than instead of completely embarrassing herself and us by doing this. This guy has typing errors all over the place. I told my wife what the deal was and she said that I'm an asshole and should immediately apologize to my sister. My parents also sided with my sister and now pretty much everything, everyone thinks I'm an asshole since I'm the only person who had a problem with it. The only reason I decided to call her out is because I considered it a bad etiquette and tacky to do at a formal event and that she should just find another solution for that night. Am I the asshole? Yes, sir. You are the asshole. Everybody in your life says you're the asshole. Everybody on Reddit says you're the asshole because the overall vote on this post was asshole. You're the asshole. The only thing is that like, is that I would say it's like, yeah, you know, if you're at a park, if you're at wherever and you feel comfortable just whipping a boob out, like no cover, no nothing, then like more power to you, woman. But maybe when you're at a formal event, somebody's wedding, you bring like a cover that you can put over yourself to breastfeed your baby, um, but that's her fucking choice, A, and B, she should not be shamed about breastfeeding anywhere, so like, 
it's her body, what she feels comfortable with. She can do what she wants and it's not your fucking choice. But it's like, cause I did, there was another Reddit story that I read at one point that like she wanted to, she was in the wedding. So she was holding her, she, she was like up at the altar while they were getting married. She was like a bridesmaid or something. And she wanted to hold her baby during the wedding. And if she needed to breastfeed it during the ceremony, she was gonna whip out her boob and whatever. Now I'm all about being able to breastfeed wherever the fuck you want. But at the on the altar while they're getting married. I no. No. I just no. I don't know. <laughs> like, no, you cannot hold your baby and breastfeed it while you're at the altar. Like, no, come on. But that's not even the case here, is that it was like the reception, there was like the dinner, it was like the party, it was like she can breastfeed if she wants like holy shit like come on man no you're the asshole that's pretty obvious top comment says you're the asshole your sister deserves a hug and a thank you for making the efforts to attend a wedding with a two-month-old exactly um da -da 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 I can't be the only one who is dying at his quote, but she breastfeeds everywhere and all the time, end quote, comments. In other words, 35-year-old man exposes himself as not only ignorant of how breastfeeding and breast milk supply work, but also unaware that newborns do indeed require regular feeding. Yeah, exactly. Um... <laughs> yeah no you're not the asshole that one's pretty easy or you are the asshole that one's pretty easy this poor woman should be able to breastfeed it's like if she was like standing up in the middle of the ceremony and like stood in the aisle and like breastfed her baby like if she was interrupting something with her breastfeeding that'd be one thing but she's just sitting in her chair she's hanging out she's breastfeeding no come on you're the dick uh, anyway, let's move on to the crafting wow for the day. This is in the Cross Stitch Unlimited Facebook group. Um, the, and it says, edited post, she is now complete. So it's a completed cross stitch. Here's the picture. Uh, Mayari, Deity of the Moon by Bella Filipina. God, if you have been watching this channel for any length of time, you know how I love Bella Filipina and Mirabilia and Nora Corbett and all of the like beautiful fancy ladies. I love them all. Um, I wish to say thank you to my friends for shipping uh, supplies to Trinidad. Um, yeah, she says a lot of thank you to a lot of different people for helping her out, apparently getting the fabrics and the thread and all the stuff that she needed to Trinidad so she could work on this. Um, it's beautiful. It's absolutely gorgeous. I love it. I just wanted to show you that it's fucking gorgeous. And it's really cool to see a group of stitchers come together to get her the supplies and the chart and stuff that she needed so that she could work on this. Uh, very fun. She tags a lot of people in this post, so um, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but she's been working on it for, she says it's uh, like, thanks for the encouragement since I started this design last year. So she's been working on it for, like, a year. Amazing. Beautiful. Love it. Mwah. Chef's kiss. Absolutely adore that. So, um, let me, yeah, maybe I, we'll save this one. I'm saving the picture real quick so that I can actually put it in the YouTube video. And then let's do, let's do, what is it? Am I the asshole number two? This one's a little bit longer, but not, not too much. This was posted 12 hours ago, and it has 11,000 upvotes. This is also in Am I the Asshole, and it has 1.5 thousand comments, so it did pretty well. Um, oh, actually, first, let's go to... It was 20 hours ago, so let's go to the last... Da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da. Yeah, no, there's, I didn't think so, but it was 20 hours ago. There's really not any, like, interesting comments from OP, um, nor is there an update of any kind. Uh, I didn't really think that there, there, there would be, um, but let's do this one. Am I the asshole? This is Am I the Asshole. 
am I the asshole for throwing away the food my wife put in my freezer and then putting a padlock on it? You're telling me you put a padlock on the freezer that you and your wife share in your home that you share together. You better have a damn good reason, bud. That's all I gotta say. Anyway, let's read the story. I, 39 male, have been married to my wife, 32 female, for four years. We usually get along just fine. They've been married for four years. One of the issues that we've had since our relationship began has been about our freezer. Simply put, my wife stuffs the freezer full of food constantly. There is absolutely zero space for me to put anything in there. At first, I tried to solve this by buying the, f wait, I tried to solve this by buying the fridge with the biggest freezer we could find. Okay. I dropped nearly four grand on it. She interpreted this as an invitation to buy more frozen food so that she could play microwave dinner Tetris with the freezer. <laughs> Every single nook and cranny is stuffed full. She still buys frozen foods and somehow finds a way to fit them in. <laughs> The worst part is when I buy frozen food or freeze them or freeze something for meal prep, she asks me at least three or four times a day when I'm going to take it out of the freezer. Oh, that's annoying. She essentially nags me until I remove the food from the freezer so that she can put something she won't be touching for six months in its place. Last weekend, I finally snapped and bought an inexpensive single door deep freezer. I put it in the basement near the washer dryer and put a couple of my own things in there, mostly some frozen veggies and a few burritos. I didn't really mention it to my wife because she wasn't home when I brought it in. When my wife got home later in the day, she went downstairs to do laundry and discovered my freezer. She excitedly ran upstairs to tell me that the upstairs one is full and she can actually fit more food in there now. I responded that under no circumstances she just touched the freezer because it's mine. Not a single ice cube should be put in there. Then I told her to not even ask because she knew I'd mention she wait because I knew she'd mentioned three to four times a day that she needs more freezer room. She sulked and tried to debate the issue, but I was able to place placate her, placate her. I don't actually know what that word is. A couple of days later, I went down to the basement to get something for my freezer, and there I found it about 70% full of microwave dinners. Upon checking the freezer in the kitchen, I found it was it was I found that it too was still completely full. I calmly went downstairs with a large garbage bag, threw everything into it, and then tossed it in our trash bin. Then I found a padlock I had lying around and locked it with a chain. <laughs> Later that day, my wife brought, brought more fruit, frozen food and put it in the... Oh my god. Later that day, my wife bought more frozen food and put it into the new freezer. But when she got downstairs, she noticed the padlock and flipped her lid. She told me I was being controlling. When I told her that there was no way she will ever use that freezer again, she threw something like a tantrum and left for her mom's house. She came back later that day and told me I had 24 hours to unlock the freezer. Nothing really happened after those 24 hours, but now she's completely ignoring everything I say. I think my actions were justifiable, but was I wrong here? <laughs> oh my god! This is one of the stupidest things I've ever read in all of my life! What the fuck is this? Why does she insist? on having so much shit in the freezer that she not only takes up their entire freezer and the main freezer, but then wants to take up this freezer and is, and if he puts anything in the freezer, she like tells him about it three or four times a day until it's removed. I really, I read the title and went, you're a fucking dick for locking your wife out of her, like, I was thinking this was gonna be like, she, I was thinking this was gonna be like, oh, he, him saying like, she needs to go on a diet, and so I locked her out of the, the fridge, you know, whatever. No. I, <laughs> he's, he's an asshole, but I think he's a bit, I think my vote for this is a bit of like, justified asshole, because she's being ridiculous. She's absolutely being ridiculous. 
but <laughs> he could have totally handled that better. If this was really bugging him, there was not much talk during this story of like an actual like conversation that he had with his wife about this is really bugging me and I just want to be able to put things in the freezer and can you explain to me why you don't like my things being in the freezer and like can we make a compromise where half of the freezer is yours and half the freezer is mine or can we make a compromise that I get a second deep freezer that I get to put my stuff in and then and it's not allowed to spill over like they could have made this decision together but instead he like bought a deep freezer behind her back and then locked her out of it when she tried to use it without really like, I mean, he did tell her, he did say under no circumstance is she to touch the freezer, which is why she's still the asshole. But I feel like if you and your wife have been together for, you've been married for four years, we don't even know how long you've been together. You're both in your thirties. Is there not, like, you say you don't, we usually get along just fine. Can you not have, like, an honest, like, heart-to-heart -heart with her and figure it out? Like, you're married for a reason, right? You should be able to communicate with your partner before putting a padlock on the freezer. You know what I mean? That it's like, it just seemed a little rash, a little harsh. It seemed like it could have easily been solved with, like, a conversation instead of, like, this feels very dramatic. <laughs> But she's still being ridiculous by like flipping out and like, yeah, she's still being ridiculous. Let's see what the, what the comments say. I need another drink. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. I need, I need another drink. Okay. So top comment says not the asshole your wife sounds like she has some issues maybe a food equivalent of a hoarder question mark edit op if you want to donate some of this excess food there's an app called olio it's available in quite a few countries basically you add listings for unwanted food and other items people request them and come along to collect them from you for free i'm not sure if it's available in the u.s though maybe someone here can clarify and op <laughs> I just realized what OP's username is. OP's username is Big Dreams Small Cock. <laughs> what the fuck? Anyway, OP responds and says, I've tried suggesting this before. It did not blow over well. Next comment says, I was thinking this. Did she grow up with food scarcity or something? I think this is something your wife might need to work on because those meals will not be eaten and will eventually go bad. It's a huge waste. Can you guys do a fun challenge where you try to empty the freezer? Like not buy any food until it's empty. Um, the next comment says, I once lived in a shared house with a guy who had a lot of children, who had a lot of, sorry. I once lived in a shared house with a guy who had a lot of childhood food trauma issue, issues. Basically, he and his siblings would eat like kings for two days, then have nothing for the rest of the week. Really awful. Food sharing with him started to make me anxious because he wanted to eat everything the first day. We ended up telling him to measure out a third of the yogurt, ice cream, etc. And he could just eat that but wasn't allowed to touch the other two thirds because those were for his roommates. I'm getting the vibe, vibe that your wife has a compulsion. Perhaps she only feels safe and in control when she has as much frozen food as possible. Not having it might make her feel very anxious and out of control. Keep the lock, I think, but encourage her to get some help. Yeah, that seems to be what a lot of people are saying is that this is some sort of compulsion, some sort of like, she feels out of control when she doesn't have all of this food available to her and like, that she might need some therapy, some help. And again, like have a conversation with your wife and figure out why she is such a loon about the freezer. You know, that it's like, I feel like that could just be a conversation. I don't know, maybe I'm insane, but yeah, overall vote seems to be that he's not the asshole. Um, 
he's not the asshole, but also like, just talk to your wife, man. Like, holy shit. But also, yeah, maybe she does need some therapy. Um, yeah, and that was his only comment, was the comment to the top. He's never posted anything else under this um, account before, and there's no update, because it was only 13 hours ago. So, that's it. Um, but yeah, I don't, he's not the asshole, but, like, you could have handled that better. That's what I'm saying about that. So, anyway, that is it. I've been rambling for 35 minutes, so I am going to sign off, and I will talk to you guys tomorrow. Good morning, everybody. It is Thursday, July 7th. It is 1029 in the morning. I am still like so tired. I don't know. I just, I feel like usually on the weekdays, especially a day where I'm just going to be like hanging in the office or whatever, I like usually have a really good amount of energy and I'm like excited to get things done or whatever. And today I'm just like, uh, I just want to lay down and do nothing. You know what I mean? I don't know. I'm blaming it on the bladder infection that like, I just I, like feel like I'm in a funk and I'm just ugh, so tired. Um, but we're close to yet another three day weekend because Perry took Monday off. Um, I told him though that I was like, listen, I, Monday's restock day. I can't just like drop everything on a Monday, you know what I mean? And it's like, if you were to take a Friday off, that would be much easier for me. But you take a Monday, I got, I got shit to do on Monday. Um, so I won't be taking a full day off. Like obviously restock will still be happening and, and the new wax will be released on Monday. Um, I made a, for those of you who don't know, I've been working for months at this point on a new wax formula. Uh, I, my current wax formula that is sold in my shop today is technically 2.0. So I did an original, like a mega original wax formula, um, that needed some work. Uh, and so I got rid of that and made a 2.0 and that is what I sell in my shop today is 2.0. Um, and it went over much better there still it it comes close to selling out every week like there are a really good amount of people who love that wax so i didn't want to get rid of it but there was also a really good amount of people who said it wasn't hard enough um which i understand it's not the hardest wax in the world uh, there are definitely harder ones out there and so i I wanted to be able to keep it around for the people who liked it, but I also wanted to create a wax that would work better for harder pressers, for people who like harder waxes compared to, you know, softer ones. I'm one of those people. I've always preferred a harder wax. And so I've, wor I've been working really hard to create one. And I have been working with uh, our, our, our dear lovely friend, Stephanie Drills, our girl's best friend, has been testing it for me. Um, she's the best. So I, she helped me figure this out and we went through a couple different formulas and I landed on this one um, that's releasing on Monday. So I'm calling it Hard and Sticky. Um, so we'll still have the wax that is being sold right now. I'm calling it or the original Randers Crafty Corner Wax. And then we have the new one that's called Hard and Sticky. So we'll have original and we'll have Hard and Sticky. Um, and that and hard and sticky is releasing on monday which is very exciting so um where was i going with that <laughs> so that's what i'm working on this week oh yeah that's what i'll be doing on monday is releasing that but also that's what i have been working on this week um in the little amount of time that i have had i um I spent literally almost, I spent the entire day yesterday, not even almost the entire day, the entire day yesterday, creating new labels to go on the little wax jars because I had to go back and create new ones for every single scent that I have. I have like a hundred cents at this point, you know, that like, it's not just like, oh, 10 of them you fix. What? No, it was... It was a large amount, so it took me, I worked on it a little bit like last week, and then it took me all day yesterday 
to finish it. Um, I did finish it though. So I did that and I made new instructions for the hard and sticky because um, it's it varies just like a little bit from the original wax to the hard and sticky. They're quite similar They're in the way that you use it. Um, but I still thought I would make hard and sticky specific instructions. And then my employee is gonna get me pictures of the hard and sticky today so that I can put it on Instagram and then have something to make a uh, listing photo for and all that good stuff. So that'll be coming today. And then I, there's a few other, I wanna start doing some, some other like advertising things today. Um, and I need to, <laughs> I need to film framing my cross stitch because I did not do it yesterday because I spent the entire flipping day <laughs> doing other things. So um, I want to film that today. So that's what's happening. Uh, got a lot of things that I want to do today and I'm excited about everything that we're doing today. But um, but I'm just fucking tired, you know? I'm, I'm ready to be like kind of out of this funk, whatever this is. So... That's what's happening today. Tomorrow is another just day in the office. This whole week is just days in the office, which is nice um, because Monday and Tuesday were not days in the office. But um, I think that's about it. I'm already, it's like, I know it's July, but I'm already thinking about like, um, like fall scents that I want to release. Oh, and for next week's scents, I guess we're already kind of getting into the like warmer scents and less of the like fruity floral that I've been doing all summer. Um, we're releasing some more warmer scents. The scents that are releasing next week, oh my God, I'm gonna say it wrong, hold on. I was, just, I knew, I thought I had it and then now I need to look at the calendar, hold on. So what's releasing, cause if I say it wrong, I'm gonna be so sad. Seven, yeah. So what's releasing, okay, yeah, what's releasing next week is we have, so on Monday when the new wax is releasing, we'll also have two new scents releasing, like always, and that is coffee cake and marshmallow. So one that's just marshmallow and one that's coffee cake. Oh my God, you guys are gonna fucking love them. They smell so good. Um, but that's very exciting. So I'm already, but I'm already thinking about like, I have a few ideas for like fall scents and Halloween themed scents. And I want to do another drills and chills release this year. Like I did last year, uh, thinking about cover minders for that kind of stuff. Like so exciting. And I also, I haven't told Shay yet. I want to tell Shay, but I keep forgetting to message her. Um, that she, she, I think she's hosting it by herself. No, maybe she's hosting it with somebody else. I'm already a sponsor for the event that's going on um, right now, the JBG along uh, that she and Emeralds and Fairy Lights, Lindsay is hosting. I'm already a sponsor for that, but um, she's doing Shay, Crafting with Shay here on YouTube and Instagram, is doing another event, I think by herself in August. And she did it last year. I don't remember if she's done it before then, but I know she did it last year. Uh, it's a Wizard of Oz themed event called Oz and Og, uh, Wizard of Oz in August. And uh, and I was like, oh my God, I wanna get some like Wizard of Oz themed cover minders. I can't, for the life of me, can't think of any scents that would go with the Wizard of Oz. So I don't know about new scents, but cover minders, I ordered a couple cover minders, Wizard of Oz themed cover minders that I will have in honor of Oz and Og the Wizard of Oz event that's hosted by Shay in August. And I want it, I keep meaning to message her and tell her that I'm doing that. And then I just forget. So hopefully I'll, hopefully I'll message her by the end of the week. If not, if you're watching this Shay, that's the one. <laughs> um, also in a couple weeks, I will, I'll be going live with Shay. So if I haven't said that already, I'll be going live with Shay on her channel on the 27th, I believe it is. I don't remember for sure, but, um, It's very exciting. So, um, but yeah, I'm already thinking of like Halloween themed cover minders, fall and Halloween scents. I'm very excited. I'm so excited about it. I 110% will be doing another Drills and Chills themed release and I might do it bigger than I did last year. I don't know, very fun. So uh, anyway, that's kind of what's going on today. And then, we have a Reddit story that I have blind picked out. All of them are just 
me blind picking them out at this point because I <laughs> have not saved any in so long. Oh, what I do want to show you first though is my cross stitch. So I did work a little bit more on a map of Hawkron Hollow last night. So as you can see, I've gotten a little bit further down in like the wings part. Um, this is what I'm going to be working on for a minute. It's like totally boring, but it is what it is because there's a lot of like that big brown blocks of color in the wing. Um, so that, that wing is going to take me <laughs> a good amount of time. So we have an Am I the Asshole post for today. Sorry, I needed a drink. Those are always my favorite is Am I the Asshole. So um, this was actually like an old as hell one that got, that it was like in like the sort, not the Reddit Hall of Fame, but it was one of the most popular, one of the, one of the more popular Am I the Asshole posts. Uh, but it was posted three years ago and it looks like it was posted in a throwaway account, but it has 51,000 upvotes from three years ago. So it says, would I be the asshole for refusing to stop cooking bacon in my kitchen due to my teenage daughter's vegan lifestyle? That's the title. So we'll see what this is. And maybe because it's three years ago, we'll have an update, but who fucking knows? Um, it says, dad here, old fart, loves his daughter to pieces, but I'm struggling to see eye to eye with my teenager and wife on this one. We've always been a meat-eating family. We live in the rural Midwest and bacon for breakfast is pretty much a given. This year, my 14-year-old daughter decided to go vegan and I jumped onto her support team with enthusiasm. We learned how to substitute ingredients, cook new things, try new things. I adjusted our budget to include more expensive vegan substitutions for her, etc. Way to go, dad. Um, none of this has been a problem for me until recently. She saw me cook bacon in a pan and then I rinsed it out to load it in the dishwasher. She exploded in anger. <laughs> and then in parentheses, teen years, I'm not too fussed about the anger explosion. I know she doesn't mean it, close parentheses. And said that that was her pan for vegan food. I was completely floored and said, kiddo, this here is a family pan older than you. This is not your pan. She asked me to purchase her a pan that she can solely use for vegan food. I didn't want her to feel weird about food, so I said sure and ordered her a few colored ones that are only for her. The reason they're colored is so that it helps me remember that I'm not to touch them unless I'm cooking vegan. That wasn't good enough. Oh, hell no. Now apparently the dishwasher is contaminated with animal product and the fridge has bacon grease fingers on it because I eat bacon and then touch the fridge and she's asked me and her mom to completely stop eating meat at home. I don't mean I literally touch the fridge with greasy bacon hands because I wash my hands, but it's clearly enough that it upsets my daughter. Frankly, I'm on team hell no. Her mom is more amenable. Oh, that's a word I've never, A-M-E-N-A-B-L-E, -E, amenable. Her mom is much more amenable and strongly wants me to consider taking our daughter up on the request. My wife's reasoning is that both our parents live close so we can eat meat products there and that she doesn't want our daughter to feel uncomfortable in the kitchen. My daughter says that she's fine with cheese and butter in the fridge, but it's specifically meat products that make her feel sick. Now I'm sorry for her but I feel like she just needs to adapt and live side by side because I'm not going to stop eating bacon in my own house. Yeah, that was actually one of my questions is that she's vegan, not vegetarian. So it's any animal byproduct. So it's like, does she have a problem with butter and cheese and eggs, like other things that are vegan or is it just meat? So that answers the question, it's just meat. Um. No, he's not the asshole. I think he went above and beyond to accommodate her. And I I think he did great. And if I were him, I would also draw the line at like, I'm not allowed to eat what I want to eat in my own house because of you. 
that's the thing where it's like you can all day I, I do this with like I can't think of a situation that I don't feel this way where it's like you can do whatever you want to do and I will support you fully that like you have all of my support if you want to be a vegan fantastic but if you start forcing me to do something because of your views that's where I draw the line so it's like he even got a new pan for her like he did everything to try to accommodate and you're now imposing your views onto your parents and that's not okay I think the same way with religion that you can believe whatever you oh excuse me you can believe whatever you want to believe, but when you start trying to impose your beliefs on me, that's when I have a problem. So that's where I think he drew the line very well in the sand that he supported his daughter fully all the way up until um, she was like, until she started imposing it on him. And he was like, that's not fair. That's not fair. So, and I think the same way that like, no, you can do whatever you can do to accommodate her. But when it starts affecting you and your life and what you want to eat, then that's, then that's, then that's where you draw the line. But that's, it's like, she's going to have to learn to live in a world where there's meat, you know, like she, is she going to never eat at another restaurant that serves meat? Like, where does this line end with her? You know what I mean? Is she never going to go to a family gathering if there's meat there? Like, I don't know. So, um, do, 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 do. The top comment says, not the asshole, get her a special sponge that she can use to wash her own dishes so she doesn't have to use the tainted dishwasher. Good point. Um, and then the next comment says, I was about to suggest something along those lines too and not the asshole, obviously. See how serious she is about it when she's getting her own set of plates, dish soap, and sponge to keep her food free from meat residue. Uh, da, da, da. A lot of people comment on that thread. Yeah, as a teen who is trying to go vegetarian, your daughter is acting ridiculous. The dishwashing machine's tainted? What kind of bullshit is that? <laughs> and she shouldn't be forcing you guys to go vegan in your own house if you don't want to. You've been very supportive as it is, buying separate pants. You would not be the asshole. Edit. And if she really wants to change your diet, she should try and give you info on how bad the meat and dairy industry is and how unhealthy, and how unhealthy large amounts of meat are for modern human, yada yada. Then you guys... And she literally wrote out yada yada. That was not me. <laughs> Just so you know. Then you guys can make your own choices on what you want to eat. Edit number two. I'm going to take the time to say this. One, please, regardless of if you're a meat eater, vegan, vegetarian, whatever, please be civil in discussions over this. If you want to be pissed off over something, this really shouldn't be it. And two, I really didn't want to start deba debates, but whatever. Just take everything anyone and I, including myself, say with a grain of salt. And if they don't provide links to a credible source, honestly, it's been nice just talking to people, getting varying opinions on the subject, but I'm starting to have, I'm starting to see a bit of hate flow through a few people for sh just showing up. I, damn, I didn't know there was so much like hate going on. Jeez, <laughs> fucking hell. Because I've always said, I've always been, I'm not a vegan or a vegetarian or whatever, but I've always been like on the cusp of being a vegetarian because I love animals so much. And <laughs> I can sort of do like an out of sight, out of mind that if I don't see it, if I don't whatever, then and then I can kind of ignore that that you know that that hamburger was once a cow or whatever and then um you know move on with it but I've always said if I ever had to do it myself if I ever had to like 
kill the, you know, if we lived in the wild or whatever, and I had to kill the animal myself in order to have meat, no, I would not. I would be a vegetarian all the way. Um, I've never really had a problem with like animal byproducts, except for like when the animal is treated badly, but then it's like, I have no idea which products are from badly treated animals. It's just like too much work. I, I, and that might be totally like fucking naive or whatever, but like, I, it's just how I do. And so it's like, no, but if I, it's especially hit me a little bit more since we moved out here. Cause we live in a small, very rural town called Keensburg in Colorado. It's out kind of in the boonies of Colorado. And so there's a lot of like cows around here. And most of the farms around us are like really cool and they have like a big enough lot and not too many cows and whatever. And I call them my moo friends. <laughs> that I, they're, 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 they're little cow friends. And, but then if you go a little bit further north from us is where you really get into like farming, farming territory and you see like a hundred cows in like a tiny little pen. And it's like, oh that sucks. And like, you know, it's just, it's sad to think about. And I definitely, I'm one of those people that like can't, um, I can't eat meat if it looks like the animal it came from. So like, I know it's very popular to have like a, you order fish from a restaurant that's like close to the sea or whatever. And they bring you the whole fucking fish on a plate, eyes, head, tail, everything. And I could never, ever, ever, A, because of my fear of dead fish, but B, it looks like the animal it came from, I can't do it. I also, that's probably, that's why I can't eat like crab legs because it looks like, it is literally just like they broke the leg off the crab and handed it to you. Like, no, I can't do that. Same thing with lobster, same thing with um, like crawfish. I know that's a very Southern thing and um, some of you might not know what there is. I call them crawdads because I'm from Texas, but, <laughs> um, I remember one of my friends growing up, it was like a tradition in their family that they had like a crawfish party. They called it a crawfish party. I called them crawdads, but, uh, so they would have like a, a whole table full of like full blown crawfish that they would just like boil and then put on a table. And I was like, mm -mm. <laughs> I saw too many kids sucking on the head of a crawfish. I can't, I can't do that. No, thank you. <laughs> Things like that I really can't do. And so it's like, I completely understand and support people who want to be vegetarian and vegan. But do not put your beliefs on other people. Thanks. Like in any realm of your life, do not force your thoughts and beliefs and opinions on other people. Just, you know, like that should just be like a standard thing in life. So no, he's not the asshole. She's being a little bit much. Let's see. Oh, the account was suspended. I was going to see if there were comments or anything. His account was suspended. I wonder why. All right. I guess we're not getting an update on that. Because I'd be curious. It's like, did they actually go through with that? Or were they able to put their foot down? Anyway. Uh, we're moving on to the crafting wow of the day. Saving image real quick. Hold on. I should do this before I start filming, huh? But I don't. <laughs> Here's the crafting wow of the day. I know. I know you've seen so many fancy ladies, but I can't help myself. Uh, this is in the Facebook group Cross Stitch Unlimited. And it's by the designer herself, who they have apparently a thing in this group called Designer Wednesday. And so Cross Stitch designers can post stuff. Um, probably post like their own design and stuff. And so it says designer Wednesday, new enchanted Rachel for information about this pattern. Please contact me through messenger and Facebook or private message my Instagram, Teresa Gill designs. So that's who it's by is a woman named Teresa Gill and, uh, it's Teresa Gill designs. And I just thought that this was so pretty and it reminded me of the the mirabilias and all the shit that I love and I just thought it was so cool and I want to check out if she has like an Etsy shop or something I really want to check out some of her other designs because like that's gorgeous come on I think that is so beautiful it's called Enchanted Rachel by Teresa Gill Designs just wanted to show you because it seems like a fairly new designer and just like so beautiful 
and the colors are so beautiful. Yeah, just wanted to show that to you. Um, but anyway, that is it for today. I've been yabba yabbing for 24 minutes. So, uh, thanks for listening and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Good morning, everybody. It is Friday, July 8th. It is 10.50 in the morning and today is the last day of Randers Crafty Vlog. Let's hope that because the week was cut short that it's not too short, but probably not because these videos are always like so fucking long. Um, so anyway, uh, it's Friday. I got some good work done yesterday. I got more work I want to do today. Um, I'm going to be trying to do like some announcement posts and stuff for the fact that Hard and Sticky is coming out on Monday. And, um, and I also want to like do a bunch of like batch TikToks. I want to like make a ton of them today so that I can like release them all throughout next week and not have to worry about like making content because I don't fucking feel like it. Um, but, uh, got a lot of good work done yesterday. A lot of good work is going to get done today. And then today is Perry and I's date night. It's Friday night date night. We do it every week. Um, and uh, and then Perry took Monday off, so it's gonna be another three day weekend. Um, so we're gonna we're about to start another three day weekend, which is kind of fun. So, um, but that's about it. Nothing nothing crazy I think happened um, that I want to tell you about. But I do want to show you the crafting that I did because Jesus, stay still. <laughs> because I did. Both of my crafts, it's the first time in a long time that I've actually sat down to diamond paint and I really enjoyed it. So um, I was glad to be back, but I want to show you. So this is Pride. This is what I've been working on. This is by JoJo's Art and Diamond Art Club. Um, and this is where I'm at. So I've done the full bottom row and then this is me starting on the second row. Um, and I did this section right here last night in the tiger. Doesn't he look so good oh, I love diamond art club this piece is huge if you aren't familiar with this piece it is 112 by 56 centimeters it's humongous um and it's round drill I love this kit so much I'm so ex I'm like so happy to be working on it and it's coming out so good <laughs> So I did one section of that last night. I was very, um, it felt good to be diamond painting again. So I'll probably diamond paint again tonight. Uh, we'll see. So I did the one section and then I stitched a little bit. Um, so, and then this is Map of Hawkorn Hollow. You've been seeing it all week. I got all the way down to the bottom here. And then I started on this little piece. There's like this Ooh, excuse me, is kind of like connected all the way down. And then there's another little piece that comes out right here of the brown. Um, and then after that, I'll get to fill in, like there's a dip, like a lighter brown, this brown, this lighter brown in the middle, like stems all in through here. Um, and once I have all the brown done, I won't really have to count and I can just kind of fill it in, which is nice. So, um, so that's what's going to be happening after. So it's just a lot of like really boring color blocking like for a while. <laughs> uh, I don't mind color blocking, but it's progress wise, it's not the most entertaining. <laughs> but that's what I worked on yesterday. Um, yeah, I'm just I'm just getting ready for the wax release next week. That's kind of like the only thing on my mind right now is getting ready for that. Um, yeah, like that's about it. I also, I found, this is really exciting. So if you guys are OGs to this shop, um, you'll remember that a while ago when I first started, I had these cute little cover binders that did really well. They came in a pack and there was like two or three different sparkly cats and like a sparkly mushroom and then like a sparkly envelope and there was a circus tent, I believe, and... um a unicorn there was a sparkly unicorn like they were really cute and a lot of people really liked those but then when they sold out I tried to buy them again because I bought them originally from Amazon and then glued magnets to them I tried to buy them again and the seller who I bought them from originally didn't have them anymore and I have not been able to find them since um, but I was scrolling through Etsy and found some of them that like they don't sell the full pack like what I bought originally, but they sell each cover minder individually. So they'll sell like um, 
you know, however many of them, whatever. And so I was able to get a few of them from that original pack and I'm gonna glue magnets to them and uh, be able to restock some of those like OG cover minders, which is really exciting. So I ordered those today um, along with some some other, I, I can't, I spend my days ordering scents and cover minders because I can't fucking help myself. <laughs> I've already bought, yesterday I bought a bunch of um, like, uh, fall and Halloween theme scents. I, it's July, I know, but I can't help myself. So, <laughs> so, um, that was fun. I took some pictures of some new cover minders yesterday. I, you know, I just did a bunch of shit. So, um, and I'll continue just doing a bunch of shit today. It'll be a good time. But I did spend a little bit of time last night. I gathered a bunch of Reddit stories, um, that I just saved the links to, but that I didn't actually read. Um, so there's still blind reactions because I haven't read them, but I have them all saved. And for whatever reason, this is a story, this is the very first one that I found. Um, it was in the, th it was, it, ugh, it was in Am I the Asshole? And I don't know why, but I felt compelled to screenshot it. For whatever reason, I kind of had the feeling that it was gonna like disappear or something. I don't know, for some reason I had the the feeling to screenshot it. So I screenshotted the story and I screenshotted some of the top comments. Um, and then I went to pull up the story this morning to read it to you and the post was removed by the moderators. I don't know why, I wonder if it says, uh, from feeds for a variety of reasons, including keeping communities safe, civil, and true to their purpose. I wonder if it was just that the comments got out of hand. Oh, I still have access to all the comments. I just don't have access to the post itself. And let's see, is the account locked too? No, the account's not suspended or anything. They just removed the post. Um, so I don't think we're gonna be able to see any comments from OP. I just thought it was so interesting that like, the I'm like, I'm curious, it had a ton of awards, it's only posted 17 hours ago. I was just like, I'm just curious what compelled me to save this. I don't know, we're gonna find out. So, <laughs> this, but I have it screenshotted so I get to read it to you. This post is called, Am I the Asshole for Getting Upset with My Husband for Not Wearing His Wedding Band When I Came to Visit Him at the Hospital? And uh, the reason I did, that's all I know. <laughs> the reason that I initially saved this post is because I have a, I have sort of, I don't know if it's a controversial opinion about this or whatever, but I, <laughs> when Perry and I get married and we have rings, I can let you know, I can tell you right now that unless I'm like showering or sleeping or something, that ring will never come off my finger, ever. And so if he like constantly wasn't wearing his wedding ring or whatever, it would make me really sad. Um, that's just me though. That like, no, if he, if I showed up to like his work or something and he wasn't wearing his wedding ring and like, or if, you know, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what the circumstance is. Cause the plan is that he does work in a like machine shop or not a machine shop. What am I trying to say? he's he's a mechanic he's a shop foreman he works in a in a automotive shop uh but not cars he works on like trucks and trailers and uh big like 16 wheelers and stuff so it's not it's actually not safe for him to wear like a normal wedding ring um but the plan is to get him a normal wedding ring and then get him like a silicone band to wear to work um so if he like went to work without his silicone band or like we went on a date night and he wasn't wearing his, you know, he went out with his friends and he wasn't wearing his wedding ring or we went on a date night and he wasn't wearing his wedding ring. It's not that I would go like, oh, you don't love me and you don't think we're married or whatever, but it would just make me sad, you know, that it's like, I wear my ring everywhere we go, why aren't you wearing yours? And I don't know, it would just make me sad. So that's why I saved it because I have a bit of a strong opinion about it and I'm curious what the story is behind this, but why I screenshotted it, I'll never know. Cause I didn't screenshot any of the others that I saved last night. So anyway, we'll find out. So again, am I the asshole for being upset with my husband for not wearing his wedding band when I came to visit him at the hospital? 
To begin, I want to man mention that he, 30 female, and I, tw er, geez, that he, 30 male, and I, 26 female, got married four months ago. He has a bad knee that got worse after an accident he had last month and needed a surgery which took place days ago. Unfortunately, I could not be with him when the surgery happened because of work, but I went to visit him as soon as I got off, which was around 7 p.m. His mom was with me and I walked into his room. I found him asleep, but his mom said he was awake earlier and was able to interact and speak with her and his dad. I noticed he didn't have his wedding band on his finger. I felt a bit confused and quite bothered thinking he might have lost it when he came to the hospital wearing it. Oh, so he, thinking he might have lost it since he came to the hospital wearing it. I'm aware that they remove everything before surgery, but as his mom said, he was awake earlier and I fe felt confused why he didn't put his band on. I waited till he woke up and I brought it up with him. He got irritated and called me ridiculous and with a weird hung up. That's literally what it says. And called me ridiculous and with a weird hung up on the wedding band being on display like a weird hang up i don't know i told him he should have noticed he wasn't wearing it but he said it wasn't like it was lost and that it was being kept safe so he didn't get why i was upset we had a small argument and exchanged some words then his mom took me outside the room and started scolding me saying that i was what i was doing was not okay and reminded me that anna reminded me that anesthesia and woke up hours this does not this is not english <laughs> saying that i was what i was doing was not okay and reminded me that anesthesia and woke up hours ago so he was still in and out of it that's not english but okay i politely told her to stay out of it but she called me insecure saying that i didn't have to worry that some nurse might think he's single or something I gotta say, I was shocked to hear that. I went home an hour later and the next day I saw him, he started ignoring me, saying that I was being unfair and unsympathetic to his pain and focusing on silly, silly stuff like a wedding band. In my opinion, his, having his wedding band, oh God, this, having his wedding band on is a symbol of respect and recognition for our relationship. I get bothered by how little regard he has for it, even if he was in surgery. His mom herself said he was awake, so he should have realized his band wasn't on and put it on. He called me unreasonable, but am I? Maybe I, I was being too sensitive, but this is not a new thing, and I guess this was sort of my last straw regarding this circumstance. That's the end of the post. I have no idea why this was taken down by the mods. Um, there's nothing wrong with this post, so I'm very confused, but... I don't want to call her an asshole, but she's being ridiculous, yes. Um, it sounded like this might have been kind of like an emergency surgery. No, he has a bad knee that got worse after an accident he had last month and needed surgery, which took place days ago. So it wasn't like an emergency surgery, but it was still a surgery nonetheless. And they do take off, you know, they, they, they probably took off his wedding ring before he went into surgery. And then he just didn't think to put it back on yet. I don't see a problem with that. Because it's like he just went through surgery and anesthesia and whatever. Like, I, if especially if this was only... Mm. yeah unfortunately I couldn't be with him when his surgery happened but because of work but I went to visit him when I got off at 7 p.m and then his parents were there earlier but sh before she got there when he was awake so it's like we don't know how many hours he was awake um but still I think that's something that I think I would expect that when I would get mad about it is when, say, like, he's being discharged from the hospital. They give him his wedding ring and all of his stuff back or whatever. And then he, like, puts it in his pocket instead of putting it on his finger. You know what I mean? Like, he puts his wallet in his pocket or whatever, and he looks at the wedding ring and he puts it in his pocket instead of on his finger. That's where I would go, hello? Like, I don't know. I know it's stupid, 
but it's just like, like she said, it's a symbol of respect and recognition for our relationship. I agree with that, but I'm not, I wouldn't be mad at him at this point where it's just a couple hours after surgery, like, come on. The one part where I do kind of get it is in the very last sentence uh, where she says, maybe I was being too sensitive, but this is not a new thing. And I guess this was sort of my last straw, regardless of the circumstance. So he apparently frequently forgets to wear his wedding ring, according to her. And it's been something that has bothered her in the past. And the fact that his immediate reaction was to get irritated and call her ridiculous, I don't like that either. Um, but also, you know, it's like, we don't, we only get this one circumstance. We don't know how many months she's been, you know, that he might be going out and not wearing his wedding ring. And she's going like, are you trying to like hit on girls while you're out with your friends or something? Like, I don't know. It's those stupid little insecurities that come up. And also that it's like, I think the reason that I get offended by it is that I see the ring as such, like she says, like a, it's such a, like a symbolic thing. It's so, it's like him taking it off doesn't mean that we're no longer married or whatever, but it's so, so symbolic to me that I would either wish or expect that it would be as symbolic to him as it is to me. And so him not like, wanting to wear it would be like do you care about this symbol of our relationship because I care about it so I feel like you should too you know but I I think she is being a little sensitive um but I think the idea that this is that this is not a new thing and it's happened many times and they've only been married for four months is kind of a not a red flag but kind of like it makes me understand why this got her upset so fast um that if this was the one-off situation then yes you're you're getting mad about it too quickly um but because he just had surgery man like come on but this could have been like the 18th time and you know she's been worried about him like cheating like not wearing it and he only wears it when she like says something about it and like you know all the comments and whatever like this could have been like the past four months could have been this like battle with him over the wedding ring and this was her straw i and i get that i would totally get that because i've already told perry when we have rings i expect you to wear it every day like i just i just i know it's weird i know it's dumb but that's just how I feel about it <laughs> because I'll be wearing mine every day. And so if I'm wearing my symbol and you're not appreciating your symbol, it feels uneven and I don't like that. So um, that's very interesting. Uh, I was I was thinking I was going, gonna go into this saying, no, you're not the asshole. I would feel the same way, but I actually don't feel the same way. I like, I'm conflicted because I get it, but let's see what the comments say. The top comment says, you're the asshole. You sound like hard work. <laughs> oh, and the next comment says, the kind of hard work that doesn't bring a reward. Oh, no. <laughs> the next comment. Yeah, my husband had minor outpatient surgery last year, and I can honestly say I have no idea if he had his wedding ring with him, nor would it occur to me to care. If I had surgery, I would probably leave my rings at home so I didn't have to worry about them. That's the thing is that that's why I say I get her premise behind it, but he just had surgery. There are more important things than your wedding ring. If you're just going out to dinner and he's not wearing it or something, then that's one thing. But he just had surgery and you're worried about him not wearing his wedding ring. They took it off before surgery. I That part, I think she's being a little ridiculous about. Uh, <laughs> I'm exhausted from just reading a few paragraphs she wrote. I can't imagine being married to her or having to actually speak with her. God, these people are going really, really in on her. 
Exactly. You're the asshole. Your husband just had surgery. Maybe he is swollen. Maybe it doesn't flipping matter because he's in the hospital. Focus on what is important, his recovery and leaving the hospital. That's what I mean. <laughs> That's what I mean where I say it's like when I would make a comment about it. I wouldn't get mad about it, but I would make a comment. If he was like being released from the hospital and he like... They get, give him a bag of all of his stuff or whatever. And he pulls out his wallet, puts it in his pocket, pulls out his phone, puts it in his pocket, pulls out his wedding ring, stares at it, and then, like, puts it back in the bag or puts it in, like, doesn't think to put it on his finger. And maybe I'm dramatic, too. Like, I don't know. I just... <clears throat> I now I now worry that I'm being a little ridiculous as well, but it's like, I... When there's emergency situations like this, I would not be focusing on the ring when he's having surgery. But if he's just, if it's like the fifth day in a row that he's gone to work without wearing his wedding ring, I'm like, buddy, why? Why is this not important to you? You know, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Is there anybody that says they're not the asshole? Nope, they all say that she's... <laughs> oh God. This one says, I must be a horrible wife. I am always forgetting my wedding ring. I don't, I don't know. Maybe it's just because I will be like so weird about it that I will make sure my ring is on all the time because that's how important it is to me unless I'm showering or sleeping. And even then it might make me sad to take it off. Like I, mm, that's just me. And so it's like, I don't wanna like expect the same thing out of my partner, but I want him to like give a shit about it. And that's the, that's the place where I, I think she's being ridiculous with the current situation. But that's the only part where I sympathize about her is that, is, is that she says this has been an ongoing problem that he doesn't wear his wedding ring. And it upsets me that like, I get that. I don't know, I don't know, but all these people are really like, going off on her they completely and maybe that's why it got kind of taken down because the comments go like absolutely ham on her yeah keeping community safe civil and true to their purpose it must be because people were going ham on her in the comments and not able or she was responding back and getting really i can't think of the word getting really like aggravated with them and like fighting with people in the comments and stuff but yeah yeah it just says this post have been removed do not repost it um without approval yeah I don't know, what do you guys think about that? I'll be curious to see what you hear because sometimes it makes me feel good when I have I have sort of an opposing view to what the comments say and then I start to wonder if I'm being the asshole and then you guys agree with me and it makes me feel better. <laughs> so, so if you agree with me, she's being ridiculous about the hospital situation, but if this is an ongoing problem, then I feel for you. That's how I feel about it. That I wouldn't go as far as to call her the asshole, but were you being a little much about the hospital thing? Yes, that's how I feel about it. So let me know what you guys think. <laughs> Maybe I'll feel a little better then. Um, but let's do the crafting wow for the day. And I'm hoping that this is the last fancy lady one that I saved because I bet you guys are so tired of saying it, but here it is. This, I, I saved it because I recognized it immediately. This is Raven by Nora Corbett, and I know because I stitched it. Um, so I have this piece fully stitched up in my closet, framed and everything. Um, but what I loved about this is the fabric she used. That is not the called for fabric. It's a milk chocolate 
linen by Zweigart. So it's like a, a medium brown that it's stitched on. And she chose this really fun purple fabric with like these little webs and shit that I just love so much. Um, this is in the Facebook group called Cross Stitch Unlimited. And it says, working on Raven by Nora Cor Corbett, the fabric from Dove Stitch is much more purple than it looks in the picture. So she chose a really nice purple. This looks so good. I just thought that I love when people get creative with fabrics and stuff like this. I just think that that looks so good. I wanted to show you guys. So that's that. And also I went, oh my God, that's Raven by Nora Corbett. I, I, I thought it was fun that I just like saw it and knew exactly what it was. So anyway, that is it for this video, you guys. Um, I hope that you enjoyed it. And if you did, let me know and let me know your, I like hearing your guys's, sorry, I'm throwing things away um, on my computer. That's that noise. I like hearing your guys's opinions on some of these Reddit stories in the comments down below. So don't ever feel shy to share your opinions about the Reddit stories in the comments. I think they're very fun. Um, just as long as you can be nice about it <laughs> because we don't want anybody fighting in the comments section that's not the point so um but anyway i hope you guys like this video i'm sorry it was a little bit shorter this week um and next week will be a four-day week as well uh but hopefully i'll actually have time on tuesday to film so it'll be a full four-day week instead of like a three-day week like this was but nonetheless I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, if you did, make sure to subscribe, like this video, leave a comment, do the bell notification so you know every time I'm, I'm, what's the word? Every time I post a new video, <laughs> I just posted uh, yesterday, so you will have seen this already, but you ha if you haven't, go check out my framing video that I just posted a couple days ago uh, where I framed my, my own cross stitch pattern that I designed called Crafting as My Coping Mechanism. I finished it and framed it in a video, so go check that out if you have not already. I love you guys, and I hope you had a great week, and you have a great weekend. Bye!